How many of you, hey, Josh, you did a great job. You did a great job, a great job. One day you'll get to my caliber, but now I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Now I'm just playing. I'm playing. You can preach today if you want. Uh, but uh, how many were blessed by Josh's message? Amen. Great job. It's like seeing, seeing, seeing my kid. I know we're around the same age, but it's like seeing my kids. <laughs> Watch yourself now. See, seeing my kids do something. It just, man, just you and Butch both. I mean, just when you preach, it's just like I beam from ear to ear. And even though you thought I was on my phone, I was taking notes. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is good. Acts chapter 16 is where I want to go today. Acts chapter 16. Let's read it. And then we're going to pray and we're going to jump into this thing. Acts chapter 16, uh, verses 24 to 26. And it says, I don't have a lot of scriptures today. When I actually gave them the, the notes for the scriptures that I was going to use today, they asked if I had a fever or something, if I didn't feel good, because usually I have a lot. But just sometimes you just get one, like you did last week, you know, the Psalms 23. You just get on something and you just kind of, you just sit on it. Um, Acts chapter 16, it says this, when he received these orders, and I'll tell the backstory a little bit in a moment. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell, fastened their feet, in the stocks. This is important right here. Uh, when they received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened. Somebody shout fastened. fastened. Oh, you could do better than that. Somebody shout fastened. fastened. Fastened their feet in the inner, fastened their feet in the stocks. Now towards midnight, normally I would be like, oh, repeat midnight, but I'm not going there. Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises to God. Somebody shout praises. Praise. And the prisoners were listening to them and suddenly Man, I could preach that too suddenly, but we're not going to go there. We're not, you get me going there. We'll never get out of here. We'll, we'll be the, the Steelers will be playing Monday night and I'm still here. All right. Suddenly there was a great, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison houses were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and the chains of all were loose. Somebody shout loosed. I want to focus on three points today. I'm going to give you a title in a moment, but I want to focus on three points today. If you're a note taker. Fastened, praise, and loose. Fastened, praise, and loose. My title today, uh, it's, I kind of, I don't want to say I, sh I stole it because it's not really stealing it, but um, it's titled, Loose Me and Let Me Go. I want to, I want to preach from that. Loose me and let me go. A preacher that I like, he preached it a long, 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 long time ago. And I just, it always stuck with me and I like the title. So I'm preaching it today but not the same message, just the title. I took the title. Loose me and let me go. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. Father, I pray for those that are just carrying a heavy burden. I pray for those that are just, it was a struggle just to get here today. I pray for those that are just battling, battling principalities and powers that are battling just the things of life, battling through home life and work and battling just temptation and things that are just coming their way. Father, I pray that you would give me the tongue of the learned today, that I should speak a word in season to those that are weary. Father, we ask, Lord, that it's just not a song we sing. It's just not good vocal stuff to throw out there, but we, we need your Holy Spirit today. I mean, we just, we, we have got to have your Holy Spirit today. We need your presence. We need, like in the book of Acts chapter 2, when they went and tarried on high, come Holy Spirit, invade. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit just burn up things today. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit just blow things away. We need you, Holy Spirit. Invade hearts, invade minds. Renew spirits today. We need you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Three points. Fasten. Somebody shout fastened. Fasten. Praise. Praise. And loose. loose. Just to give a little backstory for a moment on Acts chapter 16. Um, Paul is somewhat in the marketplace. He is being bothered by a young girl. 
um, who has, as the Bible calls it, a spirit of divination. If you dive in that a little bit, if you're just new to reading your Bible and you read that, you'll just read right over it. You know, it just says she had a spirit of divination. But if you, if you, I'm going to help you a little bit and you can research it when you get home and dive into your, yourself a little bit and research it. But that, that spirit, that divination, that word divination uh, comes from the Greek word pythos, which we get the word, the American word, we get the word python. And so she had a spirit of divination or this pythos or what we would call, and if you've been with at impact long enough, you've heard me preach on a Python spirit, which, which this is where we get it from is this Python spirit that Paul, he's being bothered. This young lady who's controlled by this Python spirit, we'll say is bothering. Finally, Paul gets upset and rebukes the spirit. And then those that were using that spirit to control and manipulate and make money through that, now they can no longer make money and um, they throw Paul into the prison. Silas, I think, just long for the ride, you know, and so uh, Paul gets thrown into the prison. But just for a moment, let me sit on that python for a second, just that python spirit, just for a moment, because a, a python is not like a rattlesnake. A python's not like a cobra. A python is not even like a, a copperhead where those, where those snakes, where they utilize their, their venom to destroy you, which we'll get into in a moment. But a python works in the spirit just as it does in the natural. It fastens. Somebody shout fastens. That's important today. It fastens itself to you. And then it begins to wrap itself around you and begins to squeeze. Just as it does in the natural is the same in the spirit. That there are things in life that will fasten itself to you and then begin to wrap and then begin to squeeze. I've been there. Does it make you not a Christian? Does it make you less of a person? It's just a tactic and scheme of the enemy. It's how the enemy works. Went through a, a season of my own preaching, you know, going, traveling, preaching, going here and there and, and, and something just fastened. You know, looking, looking back on it, it was, it was a word. It was, it was a phrase. It was somebody came and said something to me. And just that just caused something triggered some, this Python to fasten itself. I went through this season of depression and this thing just grabbed a hold of it. And I, I could not, I couldn't, I couldn't shake it. And this thing grabbed a hold and just began to wrap itself around and, and begin to squeeze. Preaching the gospel, loving Jesus, but would go and preach. And at that time I was doing traveling preaching and I would preach and go home, go back to the, they would get me a hotel and I'd go back to the hotel and wouldn't eat, wouldn't do anything, just didn't even want to do anything. And then would wait till the time for me to go preach again and would go preach again. But the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. And so I really want to ride down that road a little bit today. I want to talk to my first point here today is fastened, fastened. I couldn't get away when I was reading this scripture and just going through. And normally folks that preach from this are going to preach about late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. That's a, that's a good one with Paul and Silas. I could, I could get rip snort and preach and jump three pews in a single bound. Late in the midnight. I mean, I could just really go or, or suddenly, you know, suddenly God just does it suddenly. And then talking about the earthquake, you know, that uh, the earthquake, you know, it says that the whole house shook and there was an earthquake. The earthquake wasn't for them to get out, but was for God to get in. I could really preach that and get to going and, and get to preaching on that. But I, I want to talk about three, these three things, the fastens, the praise and being loose. That word fastened, I begin to research it a little bit. That word fastened in the Greek is kathopto, kathopto, kathopto. 
is the Greek word here for fasten. Somebody shout fasten. The Greek word there is kathopto, which means to hold on to or to lay hold of. To hold on to or to lay hold of. As I said, I've, I've been doing this for a long time and I have prayed for a lot of people. And I'm not just talking about just praying for people here and there. Um, I used to travel. I, I pastored and, and, and traveled as an evangelist and pastor. I've pretty much done it all when it comes to ministry sake of it. And there for a, a long time, well, about two, three years, Stephanie, the boys were just just young whippersnappers, just born. And I was traveling, uh, preaching, uh, there in Atlanta, I was traveling, preaching. I would travel, uh, Arkansas, Missouri, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Iowa. I mean, you name it. I mean, I just went everywhere. And, and what I would do to go to a church, I would leave on a Saturday, depending on how far it was, how long of a drive, like Arkansas was a good 10, 11 hour drive. So I would have to leave early on a Saturday, leave early on a Saturday, show up. I would preach at a church on a Sunday morning. I would preach on a Sunday night. We would do revival services. I would preach Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. I would time, I would get home. I would pack up Thursday morning, get home Thursday evening sometime, depending on how far I was away. Thursday, hang out a little bit Friday. And then Saturday, I was back, back on the road again, back on the road preaching. Uh, one in Missouri, I did, uh, I think eight weeks one time, eight weeks, an eight week revival to where I was traveling to Missouri, which was about a seven, eight hour drive from Atlanta. And I was going and preaching Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And just to kind of set the stage a little bit on this is that service sometimes would start at six. Sometimes service would start at seven. You did praise and worship for a little bit. I'd preach for about maybe 30, 40 minutes. And we wouldn't get out of service until 11, 12 o'clock at night. What were we doing that whole time? I was praying for people. I would have, we would, we would have like people wrapped around. I'd be outside. I mean, have you ever been outside in Missouri in summertime? It's mosquito heaven. It's like, it's, I mean, it's like swatting bugs off me, laying hands on folks and just, and I found that year that I was traveling, you spend hours and hours. I can't even tell you how many people during just that season I prayed for. I mean, just thousands and thousands of people. I would just preach for 30 minutes and just go through the line, just praying for people. And one of the things I found when we were doing that, I would spend hours praying for folks who were battling something that I would call that was fastened to them. Most of the time I would go through the line and I would, a lot of times I'd just pray for them. And then sometimes I'd ask, Hey, what do you need? And in most of the battle that you would battle is something that was fastened. They, they needed something loosened from them that had fastened itself to them. Are y'all still with me? We'll go just a little further. Let me, let me, let me, let me go. Acts chapter 28, Acts chapter 28. And it's Paul who is dealing with a snake. Now, Paul was dealing with the Python spirit, but, and now Paul's dealing with a snake in Acts chapter 28. I know it might seem like a little uh, National Geographic today, but just bear with me. It's not all about snakes today. Amen. I, mean, I could probably preach that today, but we'll stay out of that. I don't want to get in trouble. Acts 28, and Paul is uh, gathering some sticks here. So Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened. Somebody shout fastened. I just want to make sure that gets in your spirit today. Fastened itself onto his hand. And if you read a little bit further, many were waiting for him to die. This snake fastened. Somebody shout fastened. This snake fastens itself to him. The, 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 the snake, this, this viper, I love how the Bible just, 
it doesn't put, it's just a snake, but tells what kind of snake it is. Cause that's important. Like I try to tell you when you're reading your Bible, just don't read it. Just find those things that just jump out. Like there is nothing in there. Even when you get into numbers and Leviticus and all these things, there's a reason. Even, even when they go through the genealogy of Jesus and you, I mean, you could preach the genealogy of Jesus because you could see who has been in his genealogy. You thought you had it bad. Come on, somebody. Jesus had it bad and he's still broke some things over, but we'll keep going in there. But it talks about this, this viper. We're talking about the Python. We're talking about this viper, but the difference about the viper is that it injects a viper injects venom into you to kill you. It's different from the Python. The Python will latch on the viper will latch on. They both latch on the viper wraps itself around you, begins to squeeze the life out of you, but the viper will latch itself upon you, but it will inject it. It will impute venom into you. So as I was just going back and forth and kind of jumping into this thing a little bit and reading and stuff, and, and I was jumping back and forth because it talked about um, the, this kathopto, this kathopto, this, this Greek word for, uh, uh, for fasten, this kathopto means to hold on, to lay on to. But, but as I begin to research it a little bit more and, and jump into these commentaries, something jumped out to me about this kathopto because it's the same kathopto here in Acts 28 as it is, is the same one in Acts chapter 7. 16, this thing that's fastened, but, but this cathopto that it's talking about Acts 28 on for this fasten, it's talking about the lay hold of the grab a hold of, but it, but it takes it one step further in the Greek. It takes it one step further. And I thought this was amazing. It means this cathopto means to introduce poison into the body. The cathopto means to fasten, but to, and, and I loved it. I had to research this. Because I'm thinking of the word impute, inject, but every commentary, every scholar, everything I read, all of them use the word introduce. I thought that was interesting that they use the kathopto means to introduce venom into the body. Now I could really preach on something. I could really take exit 34 right now and we would be here for a minute because I could really preach about, and just let me jump in for it. Just, I'm going to take the exit. I, I got to stop at a rest stop real quick. Just let me stop at the rest stop real quick. I'll get back on, I'll get back on 22, but just give me a moment. Just give me one moment. I could preach about how that there is a cathopto spirit that's invading our children. What's a cathopto spirit? Introducing poison. Some people are just looking over some things, but whether it be in the schools now, whether it be in the movies that are being out there, oh, you're just being super religious. I'm just letting you know that there is a spirit and it's called a cathopto spirit. And it doesn't, it's not talking about injecting. It's not talking about imputing. It's talking about introducing introducing a poison into whether it be the schools, the movies, the shows, the books, the TikTok, the social media, it's introducing poison to the kids. I, I want to introduce you. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. And some of you, and I'm getting back on the exit. I was just real quick. Some of you can, can, can relate because, because some of you today need to get free from this cathopto spirit because it's something that has latched on to you, but now it has introduced poison. It has injected negativity. It has injected lukewarmness. It has injected carnality. It is injected compromise. This, 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 this thing has latched, has fastened itself on. And whether it is squeezing, it is fastened itself on. It's either going to squeeze until it squeezes the life out of you. Or it's fastened itself to you where it's going to introduce Things that are trying. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get. Oh, 
Paul, Paul, this word, this, this, this kathopto spirit, it, it says it was fastened. It grabbed a hold of him and it was introducing poison. It was introducing. And it said that everyone was standing around. Paul was waiting for him to die. This, this kathopto spirit, what it's doing is its main goal is all to try to destroy the purpose of God in you. All to try to destroy the gift of God in you. All to try to choke out the flame of God that's down inside of you. All to try to destroy the joy of the Lord that's down inside of you. All that's trying to, trying to squeeze and trying to inject, the, trying to destroy the peace of God that's down inside of you. You can come in and you can, you, you can come in and you can love the Lord and you, uh, hey, how are you doing today? And you can have all the outward things in you, but, but you have a kathopto. You have something that is fastened to you, something that is holding. Can I go? Can I, can I really? Let, let me put it this way. 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 Well, uh, let me ask. What is fastened to you? Let me put it that way. Maybe that'll help. What, what, what is, what is, what is fastened to you? Cause I, cause I, cause I told, I told my stuff. I told my stuff, preaching the gospel, preaching the people, but I had something. It was this, it, 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 this, this, this katopto spirit, something had fastened itself to me. Something had grabbed the hole all through because of what somebody said. And because of what some, can I really preach this thing? Can I, I mean, come on, come on. Are you sure? All because of what somebody said. Now, all of a sudden, venom was beginning to get in my system. And now, I was no longer seeing myself as Christ sees me. But now, I was seeing myself as a disappointment. I was seeing myself as a failure. I was seeing myself that I wasn't good enough. I was seeing myself that I was letting God down. I was seeing myself rather than seeing myself being the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. As seeing myself blessed in the city and blessed in the field and blessed when I come and blessed when I go. Seeing myself that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world seeing myself that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper seeing myself that if God be for me then who can be against me seeing myself that no eye has seen nor ear has heard it don't matter what hand I go to I still preach it up in there no eye has seen nor ear has heard nor has it entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for you I'll steal a little bit of yours in here seeing myself yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear no evil I didn't see myself because I had kathopto. This, this thing had wrapped its, fastened itself around me. This thing had a hold of me. I loved Jesus. I was preaching the gospel, telling people. But this thing had got a hold of me because I didn't see myself. This venom was getting inside. Maybe, 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 maybe you're like me. Maybe, 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 maybe depression has fastened itself on you. And that's big around here because I think out of all 50 states, we're 49th in depression. I think us in Mississippi are tied. Mississippi's down south. I'll just move on from that. Maybe, 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 maybe anger. Maybe anger has fastened itself on you. Anger that things didn't go the way you thought they were going to go. Anger of who left you, who walked away from you, who disappointed you. And now that venom, the cathopto. It's quiet in here. Has introduced something to you. Maybe worry. You don't have to give a big wave, but but maybe maybe worry, maybe worry has has attached. I'm not just talking about just worry. Like oh, I'm just so worried. No, I'm I'm talking about the kind of worry. I'm talking about the kind of worry. That you can't even sleep at night. 
I'm just going to be real. I'm talking about the worry that has you in and out of the bathroom all the time. That your stomach is so tied up in knots. that You can't even think straight. That kind of worry. I don't know if you've ever been that kind of worried. Or that kind of stress. Just something has grabbed a hold of you. Bitterness can latch itself onto you. Bitterness. So bitter. So bitter. This one's going to get quiet. I'm going to hide myself a little bit. Social media can latch itself onto you, can fasten itself onto you. And then what happens is when it fastens itself onto you and you see other people and you're seeing how their life and look how much better their life, all of a sudden here comes that venom, here comes that venom and oh, look what they have and I don't have that and they're doing this and oh, they're, they live like heathens, they live like, like a whole mess and I try to go to church every Sunday and my life's a hot mess. I don't, why do I even go to church? I don't even know why. Because it's venom that gets down inside of you and it's a pop to spirit that's trying to tell you the world is better than what you have. Oh, let me help. help, help. Social media can grab a hold of you. Unforgiveness. Forgiveness can grab a hold of you. Uh, offense can, 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 can latch on to you. Uh, hurt. Ungodly relationships can fasten themselves on to you. One of the quickest ways I see people out of the church is ungodly relationships fasten. That's why the Bible says don't be unequally yoked. Does it say you can't, does it say you can't have friends? I got friends that are a hot mess. But what's a yoke? A yoke is something that's linked up. I'm not linked up to them. I'm not going to them for counseling. I'm not going. I, I got I to gotta be linked up with somebody that's got a kindred spirit. I got to be linked up with somebody like as uh, Mary and Martha. And, or when Mary and them got around, the baby started leaping in the womb. I got to get around somebody to make my baby jump up in here. <laughs> Even, even though, even, uh, let me go, even, even, even though Paul and Silas are fastened in the prison, they are fastened back in Acts chapter 16. Can we throw that back up there? Acts chapter 16, it says, uh, in Acts 16, verse 24, it says that they, they put them in, they were fastened. They're this, this kathopto, kathopto, they're, they're fastened. They're fastened. Fastened. What do we say about being fastened? It means to hold on to, to grab a hold of. They're, 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 something's held on. Yeah, come on, preacher. Yes. But even though something has, has them, is holding them, they didn't complain. They didn't murmur. They started praising God. I said they started praising God. They started praising God. I, I wish, I wish, and I, I was, I was, I was, I wish I could give you like some big catchphrase and, and you could put it like, oh, pastor said this and it's so deep and so, uh, I, no, I'm just to tell you like this. There's something so powerful about a praise. I could, I, I mean, I just, sometimes it's just the simplicity of it. There's something so powerful about a praise. There's something so powerful. Point number two, praise. Somebody shout praise. The Bible says there's something so powerful about a praise that the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. That word inhabit in the Hebrew means, I'm going to steal your chair and steal your message. You use the chair, I'm going to use the chair. Josh uses the chair, I'm using the chair. He inhabits the praises of his people. Means he sits, he establishes, he dwells. That means it doesn't matter, and it doesn't have to be just in the church. You can be in the courtroom, you can be in the ER, you can be at your house, you can be in your little cubicle, you can be whatever, and say, God, I just need you to intervene. God, I need you to show up. God, I need you to do something. God, I need, oh, I just, you ever talk to somebody and pray for, oh, I just need God to show up. And then you get to praising. When you just take a moment and praise, and you start praising, God will sit right where you're at. God will sit right in the ER. God will sit right in your house. God will sit right there. He will establish himself. There's something so powerful about a praise that even in the old Testament, the Bible gives us seven Hebrew expressions of praise. This is just for the folks. I, I didn't want the folks to get all funny. Like, you know, like, well, that's not in the, you know, praises, you know, new Testament. And I, and, uh, well, let's just go there. 
Old Testament has seven different Hebrew types of praise. Number one is a yada. A yada means the lifting of your hands in thanksgiving. The lifting of your hands in thanksgiving. That's why we come in here and say, come on, lift your hands. And it doesn't always have to be, life doesn't always have to be grand and perfect. Jesus came to the tomb of Lazarus and it stunk. And he was dead. And he walks to the tomb and he says, Father, I thank you. I thank you that you always hear me. Ayada is, is, is giving him thanks no matter what situation, no matter what circumstance, no matter what you're going through. A toda is also the lifting of your hands. Signaling, signaling that I'm standing in agreement. I jump on two avenues on this. Standing, I'm standing in agreement with his word. That when I lift my hands, that if he says that by his stripes I'm healed, that I'm, gonna, I'm standing in agreement. It, all the promises of God are yes and amen. I'm standing in agreement. If he says I'm the head and not the tail, I'm standing in agreement. If he says I'm blessed, then I'm standing in agreement. If he says I'm going to make it through, I'm standing in agreement. If he says I'm going to get through it, I'm standing in agreement. Yea, though a weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, then I'm standing in agreement. I wish I had somebody that helped me up in here. I wish I had somebody that would, I got one person that lifted their hand, but, but there's something about when you lift your hand, it's standing in agreement, but not only standing in agreement with him, but I'm standing in agreement with you. He said, what do you, what, what do you mean? Because when you read Acts, when they started praising, it wasn't just Paul and Silas chains got loose. All were loosed. That means everyone they were connected to got loose. Look at your neighbor and just tell him, be glad you're sitting next to me. Yeah, yeah. You sit next to me, things will start happening. You'll get blessed and don't even know why you're blessed. Yeah, things will start, I mean, things will start breaking just because you're sitting beside somebody that's a devil rebuking, Holy Ghost filled, praiser, glorifier, worshiper that will glorify him, lift up the head. Don't get next to me. You get next to me, things will start dropping. Devils will get all nervous. You sit next to me, things will start happening in your life. High five your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're sitting next to me. I'm glad you said, because today is your day. Loose me. And let me go. Yada, lifting of the hands. Toda, lifting of your hands. In agreement, a shabak means to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. But yeah, that's why I always like you shout. You always just listen every once in a while you hear, hear Butchie give a good shout. And you know why I always love it? Because I always get a question from somebody I run into at Walmart. That's been to the church a couple times. Like, oh, I like it, but that one guy. <laughs> hey, but you, you that guy. I'm like, what guy? You know, that guy. I know who they're talking about. He's so loud. I'm like, you mean he's Shabakin? Uh-huh. <laughs> Shabak means to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Barak means the act of kneeling or bowing, showing your total surrender to the Father. Tehillah means a song of praise. I love this about this. It's a song of praise, a changing of the atmosphere. That's so good. That's a praise that'll change the atmosphere. A praise that'll change the atmosphere. A halal means uh, where we get the word hallelujah. To make famous. Zamar means to make music to God. Here's Zamar and John. To make music to God accompanied by an instrument. Fastened. They begin to praise. And then they were loose. Fastened, praise, loose. Fasten plus praise equals loose. Fasten, struggling, something's on me. 
I, this thing has attached. I don't know what happened. I don't know how this has transpired, what's taking place. This thing, uh, this venom, this python has grabbed a hold of me. Paul is teaching, even though he was fastened in the prison, a catopto, even though this thing is in him, he didn't, he didn't get in there and he wasn't, nobody knows. He didn't allow the venom. He didn't allow. He just started in the inner prison. It, I could preach this, but I'm not going to preach it. But they had been beaten. I meant beaten bad. And they're in the prison, but they didn't let the venom. They didn't let the catopto spirit. They didn't let that thing get a control of them. They just started lifting their hand and they started praising God and they started magnifying God. And it was through the praise. It was through the worship. It was through magnifying God. It was through lifting up his name and saying, bless. Can you come up here and help me just a little bit? Just, I know you sweating like a madman today, but I'm here too. So you joining me today. And so they started praising God and started going, David, you better to limp up on one leg and run come on out here and he said I needed a drummer I need a beat and so he started praising God and when they started praising God then something broke I told the story about how I was battling this thing and I'll never forget it Stephanie come busting in our room and I was battling this depression this thing grabbed a hold of me this grabbed a hold of me and I don't forget Stephanie come in the room and she was like, get up. I was like, no, I'm not getting up. Have you ever been there? You know what I'm talking about. I was like, I'm not getting up. She said, get up. No, I don't want to. And she was like, you got to praise. You got to praise. You, you, you got to, you got to, you got to praise. You got to glorify him. You got to magnify him. You got to, you got to lift up. And, and, and I thought that's for everybody else. Not for me. And if you're here today and you're thinking that's for somebody else. No, it's for you. Cause I've been there. I think, oh, that would work for them, them, them. No, God said, no, I, I, I want, I want, I want you. I want you. Can you help me, Butchie? Yeah. Let me, let me, let me go a little deeper into this. Give me a couple minutes. What time is it, love? What time? Yeah. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Hey, you stay right here. Oh, no, Stephanie, help me. Thank you. Can you help me? Are you all right? All right. So, can you hold this? Hi. What? Hold my finger. So, It says this thing was fastened to them. That kathopto means to hold on or to lay hold of. And so often, one of the things that happens in our life, we don't want to let go of. So the thing I was battling, this depression, came from some things that happened, some people who did me dirty, people I thought I could trust. And then they just, it was like, it was like David, when David said in the Psalms, he says, if it was somebody in the world, I can handle it. But it was somebody I walked into the house of God with. It was somebody I had communion with that destroyed me and David was battling this. And so I got in this and, and, and that's where my fastening came. The things they said about me and to me, I held on to it. And so often it's the same, same way we do the same thing. Maybe, maybe an ex or something said something to you and now you're, holding on to it. Can't, can't, can't let it go. Or, or, or maybe, maybe it's a childhood. Maybe it's a childhood hurt. Maybe something terrible happened to you and it's been tough to try to let that thing go. It's fastened itself to you, or it could be anger. It could be anger. Just be so angry 
of the things that have happened in your life. And you say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not letting go. It could be, it could be. I think so. You gotta be skilled, Josh, on this kind of preaching. Can you go back? I'm coming back. Yes, go. No, we're all right. We're all right. No, I, well, I, let Tina do it. No, let Tina. Can you bring it to me? And then you have people, don't mean, be mean, but pe- people add more to your. I know. I wasn't trying to be mean. And so now you have this casopto you're holding. And, and I hear this all the time. And don't take this. If you've ever said this to me, I'm sorry, but it just is. It just happens. You don't know when I'm trying to help people to let go of things. You don't know. You don't know. I hear that a million times. You don't know. I'm like, yeah, kind of, I do. <laughs> Holding on. Uh, right here. I do. I do. Come on now. You're like, you're doing too much. I am. Come on. We got one. Oh, man. <laughs> Little ones. Did you really think that's going to work? You need to hold that one, baby. Go underneath. There's no underneath. Come on. There, there, there. I'll hold this to your mouth. <laughs> but that was part of my sermon. He said, what do you mean? I kept telling her, just one more. Mm-hmm. You know how often we, we keep taking stuff on? Oh, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. No, okay. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, let me. And we just keep. But they had stuff fastened to them. They started praising. And then once they started praising, there was a loosening. So you might be here today and you're thinking, man, all this stuff's fast. And how do, how do I get, how do I get free? How do I get loose? That's what you're here today. How do, how do I get free? We learned something from Paul and Silas here that when they started praising God, I don't know what praise that is, but a yada is the lifting of your hands and praising God. So if I am care, you gonna walk with me. If I'm carrying all this, if I, if I'm not wanting to let go of all this stuff and I have stuff fastened to me, you can't help, but let go. See, there's a reason I tell you on a Sunday morning or John will say, Hey, come on, lift your hand. We're not telling you to lift your hand just for entertainment purposes. We're trying to get you to lift your hand because the moment you lift your hands, everything that has fastened itself. Okay, maybe you didn't hear. Help me, help me. All this stuff. She was reminding me there was one still there. (laughs) And so you come into service and you just have all this stuff that has fastened itself. But when you get to praise, praise is just not something we're coming in and doing 30 minutes before service. And hey, and, 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 and what I love about John, John is very strategic about the songs. He's like, Pastor, what do you think of this song? He doesn't want to just do songs that he just do songs. He's always like, hey, Pastor, you think this song? And how do you think? And, and I really want to see the spirit move. And I want to, I mean, there, there, there is, there, I want to see people get set free. And it's people that have something fastened to them. And I'm trying to let you know know today that you might have depression fastened to you, anger, discouragement, worry, stress, hurt, pain, regret. 
unforgiveness, offense, and you've been holding on to it and holding on to it. John, can you give me a little, me, uh, uh, I choose to praise. Can we do that one? Or did you have something? Well, I had something. Go for it then. Go for it. Go for it. You know what song? Oh, come on. I like that one. Yeah. And so, come on, stand to your feet this morning. Because I know some of you are looking at me funny. But this is what I see spiritually for you on Sundays. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. There's something in your praise. There's something in your praise. There's something. If you want, on the count of three, I want you to shout, loose me and let me go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now I need you to lift up your hands. Come on, let's worship him. Come on. Sometimes you gotta dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you gotta stare down the giant, worship from the lion's dead. Come on, let me hear somebody in here. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain, loud in the valley, trust that he's gonna meet you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder on. Wait for the answer Worship with your hands in the air I praise you anyway Praise, give him praise, give him praise In the highest praise Give him praise, give him praise In the highest he is worthy Yes he is worthy of all of our praise Shall lose me, shall lose me, and let me go. You can do better than that. Shall lose me, and let me go. Come on, let's worship him. Sometimes you gotta praise in the prison, cry out to heaven, shout into the door, swing wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles, brave in the battle. Worship with your hands held high. I praise you anyway. Praise, give them praise, give them praise in the high. Come on, preacher praise. John, you better go give ahead with praise. yourself. Come give on, give praise in the highest He is worthy. Yes, He is worthy of all of our praise.
I pray that this word sinks into you this week, that you develop an attitude of praise because your event plus your response equals your outcome, which is basically what he just preached today. That's your whatever is fastened to you. That's the event. Your response is your praise. Your outcome is you will be loose because God's word, it does not lie. And if it's in there, it's for you. It's a promise you can stand on. And praise doesn't just happen here. It just doesn't happen Sunday mornings. Because pastor's not trying to get you to just in, to get into here. He's getting you to a, a, a habit of praise. That praise is everywhere you go and in everything you do, anywhere you are and with whomever you're with. So we don't want you to leave this place. Maybe you're battling and you need, you feel like, you know, I get that pastor, but I really wish someone could pray with me. We have a prayer team here for you this morning that would lay hands and agree with you because when two or more are gathered in agreement, God's gonna move. So maybe, maybe this really hit you this morning and you say, and there's some things that are fastened to me. And I would be one of those people that would say to you, pastor, you don't get it. You don't understand. I promise you, anybody who is up here for prayer, they have walked the walk themselves and they have been through those seasons and they can stand and agree with you in authority that whatever that, if it's a python that has attached itself to you or something venomous that is introduced into your life, let them pray and believe with you. If you're under the sound of my voice and you say, I've never accepted Jesus as my personal savior, or I'm willing to admit that I've kind of backslidden and I've gone away from him and I would love someone to pray with me this morning that salvation prayer just Monday night at women's Bible study we had a night a time of prayer and in that time I had one of my ladies that had honestly said I'm in study but I don't even think I've ever really given my life to Jesus and another saint prayed with her and she received that's what we are supposed to be doing that's why prayer is so important so if that's you we have um, we have people up here to pray with you so don't be shy don't be ashamed none of us came to Jesus perfect all right none of us are even perfected yet so don't let your hold-ups keep you up you just come on up and that's what this church is about we're about doing life together so that we can spend eternity together one day amen so if that's you make your way up to the front as you're leaving, I'm going to bless you guys as you go and remind you that we have women's Bible study tomorrow. If you've never been, you don't have a book, show up anyway. We'll love you. We'll feed you. We'll impart the word of God to you. Couples Bible study on Tuesday night. Youth group, get your youth to youth group tonight. Because as Pastor said, there's spirits and things being introduced to our kids. And if we don't help them, if we aren't the first line of defense, they're going to be in trouble. We'll get them to youth group. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that went forth today with authority, Lord Jesus. That hidden was the mouthpiece of God this morning, speaking life and piercing darkness. I thank you that your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And that you are cutting away the flesh. You are cutting away chains of bondage. You are opening doors this morning and setting captives free. We give you honor, glory, and praise as we go forth this week. That we will make an impact again the kingdom of darkness and win somebody to the kingdom of light this week in jesus mighty name we pray everybody says amen. come on amen be blessed sometimes you gotta dance through the darkness see through the fire praise when it don't make sense sometimes you gotta scare down the giants worship for the lion's day Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain Louder in the valley Trust that he's gonna get you there Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder Wait for the answer Worship with your hands in the air I'll praise you anyway Praise, give him praise, give him praise In the highest praise Give him praise, give him praise In the highest he Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Yes, he was. Sometimes you gotta praise in the free.
excited Shout it to the door, swing wide Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles Brave in the battle Worship with your head till I I'll praise you anyway Praise, give him praise, give him praise Give the highest praise Give him praise, give him praise Give the highest he Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Give him praise, give him praise, in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise, in the highest he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Anyway 